Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And if you've ever thought that you just could never complete one mile, let alone a 5K or a loop around something like Houston's Memorial Park, which is a three-mile loop, you're going to enjoy today's episode and find inspiration in it because I am bringing back Stacey Holden, who I had on the show yesterday to talk about her book, People of Memorial Park. And in this episode, I'm sharing parts of our conversation that focus on stories of individuals who currently use Houston's Memorial Park to train and work on their fitness goals, but didn't start out that way. They were just like you or maybe a friend who you want to share today's episode with. They didn't think that they could even do one mile or they were just getting started out. So I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. If you missed yesterday's episode of the Fit 15 and want to learn more about Stacy's awesome book, which I have and is a great gift idea for any of your family or friends who would enjoy that, maybe a Houston local, I highly recommend checking that out to learn more about the book. Don't forget to head to the show notes because if you missed yesterday's episode, you might not know this, but Stacey has actually offered a coupon code for signed copies of her book. So really generous of Stacey. I hope you will take advantage of that. I'm just going to reread Stacey's bio so you know a little bit more about her before sharing this particular part of our conversation. Stacey Holden is a native Houstonian and began running at seven years old only to be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and celiac disease three years later. Through these health hardships, her exercise habits never faltered, and in 1988, she and her parents began training at Houston's Memorial Park. After 25 years of running at the park, Stacey started thinking about all of the people who she recognized but did not know their names, much less their stories. Her desire to learn more inspired her to track them down and write a book. Since the book's debut at the top of Amazon's hot new releases, Stacy has continued her efforts to meet new individuals in a weekly blog at peopleofmemorialpark.com. So Stacy, you have a lot of individuals in your book and on the blog. Any individual who really stands out as being extremely motivating to you and your readers? Through my uh, blog that I've done, uh one that has received just overwhelming uh, comments and, um, you know, just uh, people love his story is uh, Patrick Presgrove. He's an amputee, double amputee um, with both of his legs. Um, And he uh, was given running legs a few years ago um, by a prosthetic um, grant that he received. Um, But he was scared to put them on and just said, you know, um, it's hard enough to walk, um, but to run with the prosthetics is not easy. Um, right. And so he kept them in his closet for a long time. And uh, finally, a friend encouraged him to get them out. Um, but the funny thing is, he said uh, it, he was just overwhelmed when he first started, but it was because he was not in shape. And so he said oh, yeah. uh, it was a very humbling experience, um, just trying to even run 100 meters um, because he said he couldn't breathe. And, um, you know, it was just hard to start working out, uh, as anyone knows, regardless of whether you have two uh, two real legs or two prosthetics. Uh, anyway, so that was sweet. He uh, He's doing triathlons now. So if you ever see him, uh, you know, getting out of the water after that swim and putting his legs on, man, it'll make, it'll make me cry talking about it now. Wow, but, yeah. Uh, man, just his... Uh, determination and uh, how much he has overcome Um, and then on top of that he's got an incredible story of uh, he was given to the state his mom signed over uh, her parental rights when he was born they were they told his mom that he probably wouldn't live uh, very long Mm -hmm. and so um, a lady here in Houston adopted him and raised him and uh, he decided just a year or so ago to look for his birth mom and oh, to wow. his shock, she lived in Houston, just uh, oh, wow. you know, a few miles away from where he was. He's living now, and so uh, he sent her a note and said, "I think I'm your son," and kind of described what he knew about his birth. And uh, she replied almost immediately and said that she thought he had died uh, at birth and had no idea that he was still alive. Um, and so he and his wife 
Patrick and his wife got in their car and drove over to her house. And he said he ended up meeting. He had three brothers and sisters he didn't even know were alive. Anyway, just a sweet, sweet story. Yeah. Um, but you, you see him out there. He's out at the park every afternoon. Um, and you just think, man, if he can do it, uh, you know, what's my excuse? Um, he, he's overcome so much. But he went through the same struggles that any other person would to get, get running and get moving. Um, it just wasn't easy. And that doesn't matter who you are. It's not easy in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, that's like one of the most common things I experience talking with people starting a running routine. Or actually, usually what happens is I have someone that wants to work with me as a personal training client. And because I like running and that's mm-hmm. how I got into fitness, they'll, they'll tell me straight up that they are not going to become a runner <laughs> because yeah, you know, they yeah. tried it before. You know, it was it, it, yep. they're, they're not a runner. Don't think I'm going to convince them. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna, I, won't, I won't make you do anything you really don't want to do. But, you know, I try to <laughs> dig a little bit. <laughs> and see and what you know often what I find is it it's it's kind of a similar story of you know just thinking they weren't a runner because they just they were in shape so they didn't give it enough time they didn't realize Mm -hmm. how long it takes to get into shape so Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely something that yeah it's humbling for for all of us getting started right anyone (laughs) absolutely anyone yeah I know you said you said you have a few a few stories of people that have gone from you know like think like having that experience of like thinking that they they couldn't even complete a mile and even that that loop at the park is mm-hmm. you know three miles like three miles. anything that sticks out from from their stories or just people that you you want to share from that? Sure, uh, I I have met uh, I've done now with my uh, weekly blog and then including the people who are in my book I've done over two hundred stories. And, um, I, I don't know the total, I should count it, but I'd say at least half, if not more, are stories of people who, um, you know, hated running, uh, the idea of running or were just completely intimidated by it. Um, but then it, just as you said, over time, um, you know, it's become a part of who they are uh, today. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the sweet stories is Crystal had not, uh, she's in my book and uh, I met her through, another girl who I'd tracked down at the park. Um, so I met Zavi and Zavi said, Oh, you should talk to Crystal. Hi friends. It's Catherine. And that sound is your halfway point reminder. If you are joining us and going for an out and back walk, but only have 15 minutes because it means we are seven and a half minutes into today's episode. So you'll want to turn around now if that applies to you and enjoy listening to the rest of my conversation with Stacy. And so uh, Crystal fell at work when she was in her mid-20s and uh, was paralyzed. Um, she slipped oh, on the story. tile floor. Um, and so she was told that she would never even walk again. Um, and so as she laid in her bed, um, paralyzed, uh, she decided never had run, never had run before. Um, she decided if she could ever get out of bed that she was going to do a marathon. And she didn't have any idea what that meant. <gasps> Uh, she just wanted to be able to move again. Um, and so, uh, she started when she finally was able to walk again, was walking with a cane in the beginning, um, and had to regain strength. So she would go out and try and run and fall down while she was running. Um, and there was a sweet man at the park who, um, was there every morning and would encourage her to get back up. Don't give up, keep trying. Um, and so just over time, uh, she went from, not even being able to run, you know, anything, couldn't even walk. Uh, she's done Pilates also incorporated that to just um, mm. maintain her strength. Um, and so uh, you see, you know, people like that who uh, are told, you know, that you'll never walk again and just the determination um, that, no, I'm, I'm going to uh, meet this. Um, and that's not true for everyone. Of course, you know, she says she runs for those who can't because, of course, there are people who just physically can't. Um, right. But then there's so many uh, who uh, another um, one of my blog uh, interviews was a young man who um, just gained weight over time. And so he ended up at 500 pounds and was uh, just convicted that he needed to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I always think like, to me, the thought of losing 10 pounds is intimidating and it's right. just, oh, you know, it makes me, uh, you know, just, uh, it's, it's hard to think like, oh, what do I need to change the way I eat? You know, whatever, just even something small. And so to think from his perspective, you know, the thought of losing 250 pounds, is right. just, you know, here I am with my 10 pounds. Um, 
so anyway, to see that, no, he, he decided that he was going to change. And so he watched <laughs> Forks Over Knives um, and decided that he was going to uh, incorporate a plant-based diet. Um, and now he's running. He just did his first triathlon recently, um, but started running also. And he said he would he would do five minutes on the treadmill and then put a chair next to the treadmill so that he could sit there and regain his breath and catch, uh, you know, be able to walk again before he would leave the gym and go home. So he started at five minutes on a treadmill with sitting in a chair to be able to, um, you know, get out the door at the gym. Um, and now he's doing triathlons and done half mar- several half marathons. Um, so just over time, of course, none of that has ever for anyone has been quick. They've all taken years and years, but um, tremendous stories and testimonies. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's crazy. So just kind of taking it upon himself to, to make, deciding to make that change and, and realizing it was going to be a long journey, but actually, you know, putting in the, the work and being patient, mm-hmm. like you said, like sometimes just having mm-hmm. that patience is really something that we don't all have. Absolutely. Yeah. So any, anyone else that's, that's someone that is, that was not a runner. I mean, I, I have someone on the podcast. Um, she, is now an Ironman athlete. She just completed another Ironman, but she went from like hating running to becoming an Ironman athlete. Yeah. So it's always really inspiring how how these people, you know, you think that they're that they're beyond, you know, they're they're not human because they're, they're born they're so like that. Well, yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, you mentioned him, but uh, Jake Tong, the guy with the bandana out of the yeah. park. Um, he, he said, uh, that he went to college in Boston, um, and he actually, his apartment, uh, was just a block from the, where the Boston marathon comes through town. And he said, if you had said, you know, let's get up and go watch the Boston marathon, he would have thought you're out of your mind. Like that's the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard of. Um, but he said he moved to Houston and had some coworkers who wanted to do a 5k for Thanksgiving. Um, probably the one that you said you might do. In yeah. Houston. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, he decided that, uh, he wanted to do that 5k because he would get a free t-shirt. Um, uh, <laughs> and so sure enough, uh, he entered that race and, uh, fell in love with it. He said that, uh, he enjoyed, uh, pushing himself. Um, and as he kept going, he started getting excited about his time dropping. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all improvement. Um, and then he tells a funny story about um, he finally did his first half marathon. And he said as he was coming around the corner uh, at the finish in Houston, uh, there were just he heard sirens and cheering and was just, you know, overwhelmed at how excited everyone was at the finish. And then he said all of a sudden he realized that the winner of the women's marathon was coming up behind him about to cross the finish line at the same time he was crossing it for the half marathon that he was finishing <laughs> and he almost felt complete defeat <laughs> he thought all these people were cheering for him and then sure enough they were cheering for a woman who had just run twice as fast as he had uh anyway quite funny but it it, it, it all started with a guy who uh you know despised running and did not want anything to do with it yeah, and he, I mean he's a main staple of the park because he's he's the one with the mm-hmm. bandana, right? <laughs> Great, yeah, run, runs with the bandana. So he says people think he's bald because he wears that bandana, and they're always surprised when they see him away from the park and realize he has hair. Um, <laughs> but he's also now a volunteer, one of the leaders of the Runners High Club, and so uh, he's in charge of uh, one of the groups. They break them up into like a four-hour marathon group, a four-thirty marathon group, five-hour mm-hmm. group. Um, so one of those groups he's in charge of and has been for many years. Um, and he leads them, trains with them, paces them during the race. Um, and just a good encouragement to everybody, a, a beautiful example, um, and complete opposite of what, what he was many years ago. Yeah. You know, it's funny that I, now that you share that I, I had been a member of the runner's high club for like a short period of time. I was a classroom teacher for a little bit back when I lived in Houston in the beginning. So mm-hmm. I ended up missing a lot of the runs though, because, you know, I'd be coming from oh, school no. or, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Or needing to sleep in on a Saturday. <laughs> so, but he, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. You're right. he was, he was there when I was, I think he would have been in mm-hmm. charge of my, of my pace group back, back then. So it's funny. Oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's where I initially had, had uh-huh. seen him and then just seeing him around the loop, but very cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess definitely, you know, lots of inspiration for people that would think that, you know, maybe they, they can't walk a mile, but that 
if they if they wanted to if they wanted to keep trying, they might be able to do a five k. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, uh, you know, I've met many people who, um, were invited by a friend or just decided that they would sign up for a 5k. Um, and then that led to a 10k and that led to a half marathon, you know, just slowly over time, um, that, uh, the, the little baby steps, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, end up, uh, can, can lead to more or, you know, there's nothing wrong with continuing to do, uh, a mile a day, uh, just being active, being outdoors, um, and moving, uh, is so important. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, you, I mean, you've kind of seen in your journey, so I don't, I don't know if you ever afraid to run cause you kind of started with the mile runs with your, with your parents, but <laughs> mm-hmm. no. And, uh, I, I feel like when I was in high school, um, just took ownership of my, um, uh, working out and, mm-hmm. um, there was a man uh, who just recently passed away, but he was a coach um, who was out at Memorial Park all the time, Al Lawrence. Um, and he wrote a book uh, called The Self-Coach Runner. And so it had okay. recommended workouts in it. Um, these days you can find things like that online all over the place. But at the yeah. time, it was kind of one of the first, uh, it was in the mid-80s, so one of the first, um, you know, examples of how to run or how to follow a training program. Um, and so usually in the summers, um, while I was in high school, I would follow those uh, self-coach running uh, workouts, um, and uh, have, I've had you know ups and downs. I'm going through an injury right now, um, oh. it's so frustrating. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, I know there's more to life than running, so uh, I have to keep that in perspective. Sure. Um, and just use this time to rest and enjoy sleeping in for a little while. What's what's your injury? What injury are you dealing with now? I'm. Uh, the pain I feel is in my hamstring, but, oh, um, no. I just recently had a PRP on the tendon that's, mm-hmm. um, at the top of the hamstring that collect, connect to the glute. Um, and so the doctor said not to do anything for two weeks since the PRP Ouch. and then I'm supposed to start physical therapy soon. But, um, you know, he, he said, uh, normally you don't see this injury in people your age. It's normally people who are much older. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> that makes you feel <laughs> <laughs> but uh he said you know you have been running a long time you have a lot of miles on your legs so that might explain why you're suffering from this so, sure i sure. don't know i i ran a, a marathon in december and it mm-hmm. has bugged me since then so i don't know um if i i don't feel like i did anything in the marathon but i don't know yeah. I know. Oh, that's always a challenge. Like I, I ran one last month and, you know, I ch- was trying to take it easy. And then my running buddy said, Oh, we'll go for an easy, easy run. And I'm like, all right, I feel like up to it. And we ended up, it was easy, but we ended up doing six miles together. And on the seventh mile, I ran up to my place. I was like, Oh, I feel like my IT van's not too happy. No, with no. this. <laughs> you know uh-huh. I mean? yep. So sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, it's hard to say no. Yeah. So I, th- yeah, that's, I mean, you never, yeah, you never know, but I think for people listening mm-hmm. who are crazy marathoners like us, definitely, definitely yeah. are on the side of uh, recovering afterwards. <laughs> so Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Although but, one of the girls who's in my book, uh, Susie Seeley, just set the world record for the most sub four marathons. Um, oh, she's wow. run, this was yep. a couple months ago now. It's probably more than that now, but she's run um, as of, I guess, October 207 sub four hour marathon. Wow. Um, so that's the most, most in the world, a new world record. Um, anyway, very proud of her. She's a very, very sweet lady, um, but also incredibly talented and basically does a marathon every weekend if she can. <laughs> I was going to say, how does that, you know, because for me, I, I, mm-hmm. cause I had an injury that I had a recurring IT band injury that kept me out of running marathons for a few years. And, and now I'm like, well, I was only going to do one that first year, but I ended up doing two, but I'm like, I think two a year. Okay, yeah. But I mean, that's yeah. impressive. Cause I mean, you know, I, not that it's not impressive when people run them, you know, as many as that in general, sure. but the fact that this yeah. still at that speed is really mm-hmm. impressive. I mean, I kind of, I'm curious if she has any, any tips or things for how, to stay, how she does it. Yeah, but. She says her friends call her bionic woman, uh, yeah. but she, uh, she runs at the park. So there's a softer surface there helps a little bit mm-hmm. to stay injury free. She said, the most of the time if she's injured it's because of something silly she's done not because of you know from running sure that's awesome well lots of inspiration in the book 
That's for sure. A great item to pick up for yourself or for a friend. And Stacey, you are being generous enough to allow listeners to get a 20% discount on their signed copies of the book, right? Yes, uh, I'm happy to um, give listeners a 20% discount. And if you use the code FITARMADELLO um, when you check out, then the 20% discount will be applied. Um, orders have to be placed at peopleofmemorialpark.com. Um, and then they'll get an autographed copy of the book or books that they order. Um, they make great gifts, um, good for your coffee table to um, read a story a day or so if you um, don't want to read it all at one time. Um, and some stories will um, make you laugh. Uh, some stories will make you cry, like I said, um, that inspire you. Um, you can see that um, there's so many people who shouldn't be out there running. We're uh, you know, told they never, sh- never should be able to run. Um, and just people's determination um, through adversity is also inspiring too. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate you doing that for the listeners and for everyone listening, waiting for their copy. You also have the great blog and social media, People of Memorial Park, right? Correct. Yes, I do. Um, Facebook and Instagram posts and then also on the website, People of Memorial Park. Um, so you search any of those three and you can see um, new stories that are uh, not in the book, but um, all same beautiful people um, and uh, just uh, a, a great representation of what the city of Houston is. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Stacy, for being on the show. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. I had a wonderful time. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine, and I hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode of the Fit 15. Since next week is Thanksgiving, we will be taking a little break, a one-week break from releasing new episodes. So while you wait for us, I hope you'll go back and listen to some previous episodes. I have several episodes that would be of interest to those of you living in Houston, Texas, or maybe visiting the area over Thanksgiving. I will add all of those to the show notes. One of them is yesterday's episode, also with Stacy, today's guest, about her book and some of the other individuals who motivated her to create the book and her blog, People of Memorial Park. If you find an episode that you really enjoyed, I hope that you will share it with a friend because coming up is going to be the episode where I'll share a countdown of the top five episodes of this season two so far. So if you enjoyed a certain episode and you want to make sure other people hear it and it gets to that countdown, I want to make sure you don't forget to do that. Other things you can do while you wait for the next new episode is subscribe so you don't miss it and leave a rating and review on iTunes and Stitcher. All right, before I go, I wanted to mention that part of why I'm taking a break is that I have some busy next few days, including tomorrow, Saturday, November 17th, I'll be attending a running coaching certification program. I've been a runner for a long time. I've worked with clients on their running goals, but I'm really excited to be attending this event that will help me add more science to my training programs. If you would be interested in receiving running coaching from me or learning more about the running programs I will be launching in 2019 after receiving my training, you can go to this page to sign up for that special list, fitarmadillo.com slash runners. That's fitarmadillo.com slash runners. I hope you have a wonderful next week, next few days. Happy Thanksgiving if you're celebrating that maybe I'll get to see you at the Houston Turkey Trot. And who knows, maybe get to coach you through a Turkey Trot PR in 2019. Thanks for listening. Bye.